Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to another episode of MC Commute. Today we're gonna to be riding to the motorcyclist office on Aprilia's 2019 RSV4 1100 factory. Today's episode is brought to you by Speed and Strength. On today's ride, I'm wearing the Speed and Strength Revolt leather jacket, Exile leather glove, Thumper denim jean, and Insurgent boot. If you wanna know more about these products, please check the link in the description of this video. Now let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. All right, guys, here she is, Aprilia's 2019 RSV4 1100 factory. This is the premium 1100cc powered superbike from Aprilia, from the factory in Noelle, Italy. These guys have been making this RSV4 for a very long time now. I think it's been about 11 years since the first RSV4 was introduced in either 2000, 2007, 2008. And over the years, Aprilia has, they've done many, many, many refinements to this bike. They've tweaked a lot of things on this bike. What I really like about this thing, number one, is the winglets. Look at that. Derived from Aprilia's MotoGP racing effort, they've actually fitted winglets on their production RSV4 1100. It looks awesome. I like the snout of this bike. I like the tail. I like how Aprilia stuck with the original styling. Of course, they've made some tweaks here and they, there. They've reshaped the tank, reshaped the tail section, reshaped the nose. But the base RSV4, the silhouette of the original bike, is still there in this motorcycle. It's a very pretty motorcycle, especially in the color combos they picked. The black with the carbon fiber winglets, the carbon fiber mudguard, the OE titanium. Akropovic exhaust. Yes, that's OE. It's an original factory pipe that comes with every motorcycle you buy. Amazing Aprilia was able to do that. The only bugaboo I have in the styling department, or more of a function department real, realistically, is there's no LED headlights. You see that? Those are halogen bulb lights for a $24,500 top of the line superbike. This thing should have LED headlights. But besides that gripe, it's a very pretty and aesthetically pleasing motorcycle. Let's hop on it and see what it's like to ride. Here we go, guys. Hear that thing? Don't worry, guys. We've already warmed up the engine, so... We're throwing revs, but the engine's already warm, so don't worry. What do you guys think it sounds like? And away we go on the 2019 RSV4 1100 factory. Pretty lucky to be riding this bike today. This is quite the modern day super bike. It's really crazy when you think about it, how these motorcycles have evolved over the years even since the 2010 RSV4 this motorcycle is advanced a lot in nine years it's actually quite amazing how a small company like Aprilia was able to advance its motorcycle so quickly in such a short amount of time sitting on this thing well it's a super bike so it's gonna be a cramped riding position a lot of weight on on your hands, your knees are curled up behind you. If you're a stiff old guy, you are not gonna like this riding position right away. But once your body breaks in, you'll start liking it a lot. To be fair though, the ergonomics aren't that, I mean, they're aggressive, but they're not ridiculous. like the handle, the clip-ons on this bike. I like how they're offset. Sometimes with sport bikes, they put these weenie clip-ons and have them bent in super far. This one has a good muscular stance. Let's scoot through traffic right here. The seat's wide and supportive. It's not quite as thin as you would think. And I like how wide it is. 
Of course, the passenger accommodations on this bike are zero. And even if you did fit a passenger seat, the passenger seat is so small that you would never want to bring anyone besides maybe a very, very small person with you. But riding with the passenger is not what this bike's for. Whaling on the racetrack on the street is what it's for. Just listen to that engine. 1078 cc V4 set at a 65 degree cant. So it's a more compact angle than other V4s in its class. And Aprilia has always done it that way. This V4 has always had that angle. The 1078 cc is all new for 2019 probably actually bored out the cylinders. The cylinders have pistons with three millimeter larger diameter bore. Stroke and compression ratio is the same. And it's really hard not to exceed the speed limit when you're on a motorcycle that makes 190 horsepower at the back tire like a real 190 horsepower at the back tire. Simply astounding how how much power this engine makes. It's unbelievable. Of course, in the upgraded 1078 cc, probably had changed some other things in the engine. The oil pump, the fifth and sixth gear make, made it a little taller because the engine has more torque to pull fifth and sixth gear now. 82 foot-pound of torque at the back tire right around 9800 rpm so this engine is a powerhouse an absolute powerhouse get to 100 miles per hour real quick on this bike and just the sound it makes there is no other sport bike motorcycle nothing that makes as an exhilarating sound as this 65 degree v4 it's unbelievable you could buy a hundred thousand dollar sports car that doesn't sound as good as this as this $24,500 motorcycle. It's unbelievable. 6-speed transmission has a slipper clutch that works well, has quick shifter, has auto blip. The works. First gear is a little bit tall. It's got wheelie control set on mode two, so that's why it's intervening with the power. Of course, Aprilia has always been known for its very, well, not always, but ever since 2011, for its very, very advanced electronics package. Aprilia calls it the Aprilia Ride Control. And their electronics package has always worked very well. This 2019 RSV4 adds cruise control. Cruise control. Just like BMW's S1000RR. So you can arrive to your destination in a more comfy way because you're not having to hold the throttle at the exact speed you want. All right, guys, we're riding on the notorious bumpy frontage road. And for a super bike, the suspension is not that ridiculously stiff. I mean, you definitely feel the bumps, and it's a very well-supported, firm ride. But it wasn't like the other Italian bike we rode recently. This up-spec. RSV4 1100 factory is outfitted with Olean's suspension front and rear. Doesn't have semi-active damping control. 
it's full manual adjustment but I don't see any problem in that at all I love full manual everything we'll modify the electronic settings here at the stop it's actually pretty easy to do that there's actually paddle shifters here on the left clip-on so you can actually adjust the Proteus traction control on the fly. So right now we went from three to one. So that's really nice. Not so much on the street, but when you're riding on the track, I've used that feature before, it's nice. We can also adjust the engine, combined engine power and throttle maps using this start button here. Probably has always chosen to use the start button to, to adjust that. So we just went from track to sport. I like sport pretty much everywhere. Nah, I guess at the track the race mode does work pretty well. But on the street I like the sport mode. It just kind of calms the, the throttle response a little bit. These RSV4s, when they came out, you know, right away when they came out, they had ride-by-wire throttle. It's one of the first motorcycles, sport motorcycles, to use that. And it worked, worked then really well. And now, this 2019 represents the fourth generation of that ride-by-wire system. And it still works incredibly well. But if you're a street stunter dude, you're going to notice that the throttle response in these bikes has been always been really hard. So if you're trying to do long power wheelies down the freeway and stuff like that, you're gonna have a hard time modulating that wheelie with a throttle just because it's so overly responsive. And that trait continues in this 2019 RSV4. But at the same time, when you're in the racetrack and you have it in race power mode race, that feel you get from the rear tire and the rear suspension is quite <laughs> absurd. It's so good. What's this guy doing? Well, I hope you guys don't mind at the stop. I took the liberty to disable Aprilia wheelie control. You can do that at a stop via this little joystick here on the left switch gear. It's actually very easy to do. So we disabled Aprilia wheelie control. So now we can do some power wheelies. My only critique with the switch gear is it's a little flimsy feeling. It doesn't have the the correct tactile response. There's a one company in particular that's really, well there's actually two or three companies that are really good at ensuring good tactile resp response when you touch the buttons and touch the switch gear on their motorcycle. So that's the one area a Prilly could approve upon. Windscreen on this bike, it could be taller. I'm a tall guy. I always like taller windscreens. The bigger the better. Jeez, that sound is just so mean. No wheelie control is much better. This RSV4 1100 has got a 4.8 gallon fuel tank and you're going to need every last drop. These V4 engines from Aprilia have always been tremendously thirsty and this 1078cc engine is especially thirsty. I've been averaging 30.6 miles a gallon on this bike. And that's actually a really favorable fuel mileage. If you're really wailing on this thing, you're going to get in the mid to high 20s. So, not a very efficient sport bike engine, but a very fun and fast one.
are these guys doing? All right, guys, we're zipping around 72 miles per hour in top gear. Engines turning just below 5,000 RPM. There is a little bit of engine vibration in this in this powertrain, but it's not ridiculous. It's again the good kind of vibration. Lets you know that you're riding a motorcycle and, and you're having fun. Again, the suspension feels taut, but not overly so. Probably did a pretty decent job of making a comfortable street bike. I mean, this is a racing track bike made for that, but you can totally ride it on the street. Oh, we accidentally enabled wheelie control, now that's off. This instrument panel, color TFT, it looks nice, but I do wish the actual display was larger. You can see some of the information here, especially the ABS, wheelie control, launch control, all that stuff is very condensed and small oh my god what the hell is this always freaks me out when there's like oil or water randomly on the surface of a road anyways the display it could be larger but i do like the gear position indicator i do appreciate the on the fly adjustment that this bike is capable of probably offers a cool accessory where you can buy this this setup which allows you to pair your phone to the motorcycle. I don't really know why you'd want to do that, but it's cool that Aprilia offers the ability to do that. Finally a turn, thank God. We have to be going at least twice to triple the speed to even feel the handling on this motorcycle. You have to remember this is a competition style motorcycle meant for going very fast around turns. So at the slow speed, you kind of can't really feel the handling. But at the good thing is, it doesn't feel weird. Sometimes these racy super bike, sport bikes, they can kind of feel weird at low speeds. This thing does not. It's important to note that Aprilia tweaked the weight distribution and the chassis of this motorcycle ever so slightly. It modified the rake just a little bit they shorten the wheelbase and then the fork has just a titch more travel like I said earlier during the introduction Aprilia rather than full redesigns all the time Aprilia likes to make a careful and considerate series of refinements every couple years so even though this bike is quite a bit different than the original original RSV4, it kind of isn't in a way. All the characteristics of the RSV4, R6-like packaging, V4 torque, power, and whale, sharp handling, all those things are in this bike. But it has lost a lot of weight, to be fair. The original RSV4s were quite they were porkers. They were heavy, heavy, heavy motorcycles. This thing now with a 4.8 gallon gas tank filled up weighs right around 439 pounds. That's 30 pounds less than the original bike. So quite, quite a big difference. And you feel that on the road and the track. Braking components on this bike are stout. We've got Brembo Stalima calipers. That's a new caliper that was originally fitted on the Panigale V4. Not only do they look unbelievably awesome, they are just so rigid and strong. I love them. 
Nice Brembo radio mount master cylinder. The brakes on this bike are very adept at shedding speed. You have ABS three modes of ABS. We're in the lowest setting. So right now you can actually, in level one, you can lock up the rear wheel. Level two and three, you can't. ABS calibration in mode one works so good, I don't even know why you'd ever take it off. You can even do endos with ABS mode one. All right, guys, this brings us toward the conclusion of our MC commute today. We're almost at the motorcyclist office in Southern California. If you guys want to know more about this RC4, please hop on to motorcyclistonline.com. I know that we wrote a first ride review from the press introduction in March last year. Additionally, Hop on to cycleworld.com. They have RSV4 content there. Also recently published a superbike comparison with two other motorcycles. So read that if you'd like. All right, the wheelie test. Wheelie controls off. Let's do it. Whoa, whoa. Touchy throttle. Probably should have done it in second gear. Oh yeah, she backs her good. Yep, great bike. Love this bike. Love throwing revs on this thing. Yeah. Here we are guys, just pulling up to the office. Ready for a hard day's work. All right, guys, there she is. Probably is 2019 RSV4 1100 factory. What a beautiful motorcycle. Let's pull up the old Instagram machine, do some Q&A, see what's up. All right, here we go. Right to the top, straight to the top. RTA Beagler. I'm sure the bike is spectacular at high speeds and track days, but as one bike, as a one bike kind of guy, how's the low speed stop and go-ness of the bike in city traffic? Well, it is definitely an Italian superbike. So a Japanese superbike would be a little bit more comfy day to day in urban city environments, but still this thing is not bad. It it starts and stops pretty well. First gear is a little bit tall, but the clutch has good response. And that engine is just so fun. It's so exhilarating and rewarding to jet between stoplights. Yes, the suspension's a little firm. Yes, the ergonomics are a little tight for a taller guy at six foot. But this bike is so BA that I'd ride this thing to work in the city. It's just that awesome. Great question. All right. Another question here. Is it a thirsty bike? How far can you get on a tank? Yes, it's absolutely a very thirsty bike. This thing has a 4.8 gallon fuel tank, which we talked about, probably actually expanded the fuel capacity of this bike a couple years ago. But it's thirsty. If you're whaling on it, you're gonna get 25 miles to a gallon. If you're riding mellow, you're gonna get 30 miles to a gallon. So yes, this engine burns lots of fuel. If you like burning fuel, get this bike. Great question. What was overall more enjoyable to ride to work? The RSV4 or the 2020 S1K? S1000RR is what Dan50 is referring to. RSV4 is more enjoyable to ride to work. The engine in this bike is absolutely exhilarating and it looks cool and it's always been that way. So this one is more enjoyable to ride even though it is less comfortable than the S1000RR. Well, let's get another one. Is it quicker than the S1000RR in stock form? Yes, it is absolutely quicker than the S1000RR in stock form. What exactly is the speed limit on the roads you ride? Says F-I-R-O-Z-I-Q-B-A-L-P. Well, the speed limit varies on the roads that I ride, but generally 
the speed limit is as low as 25 miles per hour and as high as 65 miles per hour. So we're definitely ex exceeding the speed limit quite often on this bike. So make sure when you're doing that you're wearing the proper motorcycle riding gear by speed and strength and make sure you're paying attention and stay within the speed limits as much as possible. All right guys, that's enough Q&A for today. If you want to know more about this bike, please hop onto the websites I mentioned before, MotorcyclistOnline.com, CycleWorld.com. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, let us know via comment, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching today's MC Commute. All right guys, one thing we forgot to mention, would I buy this motorcycle for $24,500? I would absolutely buy this bike for $24,500. It is fast as hell. It looks badass. It handles like a dream around the racetrack. It's got every electronic countermeasure known to man. And the electronic countermeasures actually function and perform well and make the motorcycle more adept at going very quickly. But even more than this bike, I would probably buy the RSV4RR. That motorcycle is $7,000 less expensive than this thing. Yes, it only has cast aluminum wheels. Yes, the engine is a little bit smaller in terms of displacement. Yes, it doesn't have Olean suspension. It has sack suspension. Yes, the RSV4RR does not have winglets, but it's seven grand less expensive. And if you're a budget-minded superbike enthusiast, then that is the bike you're going to want to get. Thanks for watching, guys.